Hey guys, we're going to start working our way through the insect orders today, and this is going to be part one of a three-part grouping. And part one is just going to cover hexapods and some of the basal insects. So the outline is as follows. We're going to talk about some hexapods, your proturans, diapleurans, columbula, and then we're going to talk about two insect groups that are at the very end of the tree, which are your mycocoryphia and thysanura. And just like last time and all the other times, you can go right over there and you can click on each of those sections and jump to that section of the video. There will also be a link right up there so you can jump to the other two videos if you want to learn about other insects. So the first thing is that we're starting in the subphylum hexapoda. And hexapods include insects, but not all hexapods are insects. If you're a hexapod in Greek, that just means that you have six legs, and it contains everything from these little kind of little itty bitty small critters that live in the soil all the way up to your wasps and beetles and stuff. Your very typical insects. And your characteristics are that you have three body segments and three pairs of legs. The first order is Protura and its common name is just Coneheads. Their characteristics are that they're very, very tiny, they have no antennae or eyes, and they use their first pair of legs like antennae. You're probably not going to see these guys. They're incredibly tiny and they live in leaf litter. About the only way that you can get them is with a collection technique called a Berlazy funnel and there's a link to what that is and how to use it right there, right now. Go, go click it. The next order of hexapods are the columbula and in Greek this just means glue piston because it was thought that a lot of them could release this sticky substance from this organ called a colophore, which is this little tube that like sticks out of their abdomen. While it's true that some of them can, it's mostly used for fluid and water balance and so that's how they pick things up in the environment. Their common names are springtails and that's because one of their characteristics is this really curled tail called a furricula and they use it to jump like a spring and hence springtails. I know, it's brilliant. Um, other characteristics are that they have six or fewer ab abdominal segments and they usually have like really short stubby antennae. The easy thing is that columbula are pretty easy to key out because they all look pretty different. You have like the really short fat ones and the really round fat ones and some longer ones and so they're all pretty easy to key out if you're interested. You find these guys mainly in leaf litter and there's a really cool thing where you can do that if you take leaf litter and like shove it in a bag and then put it in your Berlazy funnel and let stuff drip out of it for the next two or three days, you can get a wide diversity of stuff in the alcohol at the bottom. And this is really cool if you want to bring it into a classroom because it just opens up people's eyes to show you all this stuff that you walk on like all the time. And then you could take leaf litter from different habitats and see what kinds of organisms or the diversity of the organisms or the size of the organisms that you find in each one. And it's kind of a fun, cool classroom thing that you can do that integrates insects. Well, kind of, because they're hexapods. You get the idea. A really cool study came out last year and showed that columbulins help pollinate moss. It's not true pollination because moss doesn't have pollen. It has sperm that is usually transmitted from one place to another by water, but they're actually started to find that springtails and other small arthropods are collecting the sperm and like moving it around and it's a little bit more efficient than just relying on water. So even basal plants are relying on insect-like things to help move their sperm and genes around, which is really cool. The next hexapod that we're going to talk about are the diplura, and in Greek this just means two tail, and that's because they have two filaments coming off the end of their abdomen. There is no middle tail, so they only have two. Um, there's one family in this order that look kind of like they have earwig pincers on the bottom of their abdomen, but you can tell them from earwigs because they have no eyes and they're usually really pale colored and they have maniliform antennae. Diplura are another thing that you can find in those soil samples with that Berlazy funnel. So if you do a Berlazy funnel, then you can expect to find Protura, columbula and diplura in there and a ton of spiders you usually get a ton of spiders in them too 
here we are finally in the class insecta i know you've been waiting for like ever to actually talk about insects and here we are actually at insects insecta comes from this latin greek hodgepodge of languages that just means cut into pieces and it's referring to the segmented body Insecta contains everything else from here on out, everything that we're going to talk about. And so we're going to start with the really basal insects, like your microcariffia and thysanura, and then go up through all of your other groups, like your dragonflies and mayflies and cicadas and beetles and flies and wasps and butterflies and caddisflies and stoneflies and mantises and cockroaches and termites and all these other lovely things that you're so excited to learn about. The characteristics for insects are that, again, they have six legs and three segmented body parts, but they also have the Johnston's organ, which is that thing that I talked about, which is in the antennae and senses movement across the antenna, and they also lack musculature beyond the first antennal segment. We're in this natural group right now called a pterygota, which just means a you don't have wings, pterygota, just like winged insects, and A is without. So without wings, here we are. This is at the bottom of the insect tree, way, way, way down on the bottom. Um, and the first thing we're going to talk about is this order called Microcariffia. Sometimes in older literature and other lit literature, it's called Archaeognatha. And so Microcariffia in Greek just means small head, and Archaeognatha in, in Greek just means old head helpful I know um, and that's just because its mouth parts are pretty similar to like the old hexapods and hasn't quite been 100% modified into what we think like insect mouth parts should be their common name is the jumping bristle tails and yes they jump and their characteristics are that they have um, their thorax is arched and they have really big large eyes microcariffia are often found under Bark. So you, unless you're like hacking away at tree bark, you're probably not going to find them. In fact, the best way to find them is this pro process called smogging or fogging, where you take an old dead tree and you waft pesticides out of it and put a white sheet underneath it and just wait for things to drop out. And that's pretty much how you get these guys. The last group that we're going to talk about for today is the order Thysanura, and in Greek that just means bristle tail, and it's referring to the three Circe at the end of the abdomen. Their common names are silverfish and fire brats, and their characteristics are that they have the three Circe and that they're usually scaled. You can usually find these guys in your bathroom, or if you have a house in your basement, or if you're if you work in a really old building like I do, and a lot of times in like really old drawers where there's old books and papers, you'll find them there too, and that's because they're eating all the old paper and stuff. The most common family that you're probably going to find is Lepismatidae, and so if you find these guys, you just like cross up an order and a family all at the same time. I hope you enjoyed this segment on little critters that you may or may not have known existed. Most of these guys are decomposers and or scavengers, so while they're really tiny and you don't see them very often, they're actually really, really important to the ecosystem because they're kind of like the cleaner uppers of the of the ecosystem. And a lot of these guys will actually like start degrading really tough leaf material that's hanging around. And so like that's why your thighs and neuro eat books and stuff, and that's because they're main role in the ecosystem is to, to decompose that really tough woody leaf litter that's just hanging around.